Hello, I'm Marilyn Vanderber. The theme of the last seminar was, you can change. After sharing these ideas one day with students, I asked them, if you could change one thing about yourself, what one thing would you like to change? An eighth grade boy wrote, I'm going to change my height. And a twelfth grade girl wrote, I'm going to get my divorced parents back together. And I began to realize the importance of today's theme. It's based on this quote, God grant me the courage to change the things I can, accept the things I cannot change, and the wisdom to know the difference. Do you remember Jimmy Durante? He was one of America's best loved entertainers. He once said all of us have schnozzles. He was referring, of course, to his big nose. But what he was saying was that everyone has something different about them. A big nose, a scar, crooked teeth, a birthmark, too tall, too short. And many people have other things they cannot change. A disrupted family life, an illness or disease, the death of a loved one. During the last seminar, I hope I convinced you that you can change certain things. It's equally important to realize that those things which cannot be changed must be accepted. This could be the greatest challenge of all. Sammy Davis Jr. has always been one of my favorite entertainers. He began performing at age three. He didn't begin to be recognized as a great entertainer until age 26. Let me quote from his autobiography, Yes, I Can. I sat in the dressing room rereading my reviews in the New York Daily News. The best, fastest, and most furious young entertainer to come along in some time is a 26-year-old named Sammy Davis Jr. As the old saying goes, God made Sammy as ugly-looking as he could, and then he hit him in the face with a shovel. He said, I stared at my face in the mirror. I guess I'd gotten used to it. Not too long after that, he was in a tragic automobile accident. They had to remove one of his eyes. Days later, when they took the bandages off, he said, I stared at my nose. It was flatter than ever, and there was a big gash across the bridge. Oh, wait a minute, Doc. I was never exactly a debutante, but this is ridiculous. When he took the bandage off my left eye, I expected to see a hole, but the lid had been sewn closed like a Boris Karloff makeup job. The doctor said we took 30 stitches inside and outside the lid. He said I could see how the lid had been busted like a paper bag and all the ragged ends that must have been hanging loose had been sewn back together to make one piece. In the midst of this grotesque piece of flesh, I had long eyelashes. The doctor had slid open the edge of the lid and stuck the hairs in one by one like putting toothpicks into an orange so that I'd have something there until the new eyelashes started growing. Sammy Davis, Jr. He was short. He knew he was ugly. All he wanted to do was to be up on stage singing and entertaining, and now he only had one eye. He accepted what he could not change. He forced himself back on stage, first with a patch covering one eye, then with a glass eye. He is one of the superstars of all time. Probably the most amazing story of all is Charlie Boswell, all-American halfback from the University of Alabama and a basketball star as well. He had a chance to play professional football and baseball, but when World War II came, he was sent to fight in Europe. A shell hit his tank, and he was totally blinded. All he had wanted to do was to become an athlete. His life had been sports. How could he accept being blind? He did accept it and began playing golf. Charlie Boswell won the world championship for blind golfers. He shot a 38 
for nine holes on a championship course. Now, that's almost par. I watched them play at the blind golfer's tournament. Someone plays with the blind golfer and tells him about the course. He'll say the course is straight ahead for about 200 yards, then it veers to the right for about 100 yards. There are some trees to the right, a little lake to the left. Then when they get on the green, many ask for a rattle to be put in the cup, and the golfer putts to the sound. Totally blind, and Charlie Boswell shot almost par on a championship course. Peter Falk, handsome television and movie star. At the age of three, he lost his right eye as the result of a tumor. They put in a glass eye. Did he walk through his school days with his hand over his eye because he was so embarrassed? He became the president of his senior class. He was an outstanding baseball player. One day he slid into third base. The umpire made a bad call and called him out. He took out his glass eye. He said, here, you could use another eye. He had accepted what he couldn't change so completely. He could even laugh at himself. When he wanted to enlist in the Marines, he memorized the eye chart in advance. He almost passed the eye test before his glass eye was noticed. He said one eye didn't move and they thought something was fishy. He began acting in a small community theater. Then Broadway, television films. He must have been excited when Columbia Pictures sent for him to come to Hollywood for a screen test. They did not sign him. A top executive of, of Columbia said, for the same price, I can get an actor with two eyes. Wouldn't that statement be enough to make you quit, give up? Peter Falk must have accepted what he could not change. No one remembers which two-eyed actor Columbia Pictures hired, but within two years, Peter Falk had won two Oscar nominations. Bruce Furness has swum competitively since he was five years old, enjoying good health.